All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard. It is uh, Tuesday, and it's great to be back. I hope you all had a great Fourth of July uh, holiday. And uh, joining us now right off the bat, because there's so much to get to and so much to talk about, is our friend Bill Crystal, founder and editor of the Weekly Standard, ABC News contributor. And uh, check out weeklystandard.com. Hello, Bill. Hey, Steve. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for being with us. All right, so let, let's start um, uh, with Donald Trump and Hillary. Hillary gave a first, or it's going to air any moment uh, to CNN, an interview. And uh, one of the little tidbits they leaked out was she's uh, surprised at Donald Trump. She's disappointed in Donald Trump. And she lumped all the Republican candidates together because none of them want a path to citizenship like she does. Even Jeb Bush, when questioned specifically on him, said he doesn't want a path, uh, path to citizenship. And, of course, on Sunday, I believe it was George Will who said that uh, Donald Trump is becoming or will become the Todd Akin. Uh, has, has it gone that far in your mind? Not only has it gone that far, if anything, I'd say Trump, who starts off with big negatives, obviously. Most Republican voters don't think he should be the next presidential candidate. But so far, Trump is the opposite of Aiken. Aiken was an established congressman uh, who made an idiot of himself. Trump is an outsider who is saying some things that the establishment doesn't want to hear that is resonating with voters. And the most controversial thing was obviously a statement about some of the immigrants, illegal immigrants from Mexico, which was crudely stated, and I think it appropriately stated, and I certainly would join in saying you shouldn't have said it. Having said that, it's not ridiculous to be concerned about crimes committed by illegal immigrants and about whether our federal policies are sending those people back or keeping those people in jail the way we should be. And the idea that that's going to be an embarrassment to the Republican Party, that Trump is raising that issue, when Obama, President Obama and his administration have purposefully uh, cut back on the deportations and, and they tolerated the sanctuary cities and so forth. I don't think Trump hurts the Republican Party in that respect. All right, you know, Dianne Feinstein, to your point, Dianne Feinstein reportedly today has said that it might take federal legislation to make sure that what happened in San Francisco, where the uh, five times, six, seven time convicted felon who was back and forth out of this country five or six times and murdered that poor woman in San Francisco at the uh, harbor there, uh, that uh, that doesn't happen again. That if ICE, uh, you know, would like to know when someone is released, even if you're a sanctuary city, you have to let them know. So that that uh, is, is something that could certainly work in Trump's favor and the Republicans' favor. Absolutely. And again, this is the Obama administration and a bunch of liberal cities who have been, it's one thing not to go hunting up people who are, you know, maybe here illegally, but are working at a job and minding their own business and uh, raising a family, perhaps even. We can argue about how to, what path to legalization to give them, whether how tough one should be and trying to deny them work permits, all that sort of stuff. That's very different from this issue. And I think, uh, uh, so I think Trump hit a nerve on that. He hit a nerve on China. You know, everyone's ridiculing what he says about China. I don't think his economic policies towards China are very sensible. On the other hand, the idea that we should be alarmed about a dictatorship that it turns out is hacked in and taken personnel records of, what is it, three or four million Americans that is uh, now having a bit of an economic crisis on their own, which could lead them to uh, he cracked down even further internally and also do provocative things externally. I don't think Trump is so, so, so far off on that either. So I'm not a Trump fan. I don't think he should be the Republican nominee. But, you know, it's ridiculous. It's very, very foolish if the Republican establishment or the Republican candidates treat him with disdain instead of saying, you know what, it's good to have more voices, good to have some unconventional voices in the race, good to have Dr. Carson, good to have uh, uh, Trump, good to have Carly Fiorina, people who haven't spent all their time in, in office or seeking elective office. And uh, I think then, then whoever it is, Walker or Rubio or Cruz or someone, can then say, you know, but I think I've got, you know, the uh, uh, track record of finding solutions to these kinds of problems. Let me uh, switch to uh, Bernie Sanders. And, um, you know, it was reported, in it, and he acknowledged it, and the media kind of gave him a pass for various reasons. He's not serious enough of a candidate. This was at the beginning. It was 40 years ago uh, when he, you know, had written uh, in a publication that, uh, women dream of being gang raped by three men at the same time while they're having sex with their partners. Uh, now it, it, it came to light in a 4th of July New York Times cover story on Bernie Sanders, but it was buried in the story that, well, I, I don't know. Is, is Did we lose Bill? No, I'm here. Oh, okay. I don't know what that, know what that is. It's a fax machine, guys, something. Um, okay, I think we took care of it. Okay, Bill. Anyway, so it's come to light that... Um, uh, years ago, uh, Bernie Sanders uh, cited studies claiming that cancer, uh, specifically cervical cancer, could be caused uh, by psychological factors such as unresolved hostility towards one's mother and also, get this, 
um, when it came to cervical cancer uh, because women weren't having enough orgasms. Now, uh, you know, this is crazy talk, but it, it's crazy talk that if a Republican did it, uh, he'd have to account for it. Well, it is not that unlike Todd Aiken, right? I mean, in terms of being the, sort of the same subject matter, you might say. And, of course, Aiken was disgraced that every Republican had to distance himself for, who was running had to distance himself from Aiken. It would be interesting to see if the Democrats are asked about what they think about Bernie Sanders. But he was a flaky left-winger, it seems like, 40, 45 years ago. Now he's a much more orthodox left-winger. sort of Marxist, <laughs> you know, social Democrat type. And um, But, look, he's going to cause trouble for Hillary. The party is far left. The party does not, you know, is open to Sanders' message. He, Sanders is much more of a problem for the Democratic Party than Donald Trump is for the Republican Party. Yeah, very interesting. All right, I want you to hear what Barack Obama said just the uh, yesterday, I guess, uh, with regard to ISIS. Let's go to 61. As I've said before, and I know our military leaders agree, this broader challenge of countering violent extremism is not simply a military effort. Ideologies are not defeated with guns. They're defeated by better ideas, a more attractive and more compelling vision. All right, so here again, it's basically Marie Harf all over again, just stated a little differently. Uh, you can't beat, you know, the ideology of ISIS with guns. He didn't even say only with guns. He said with sure. guns. That was really stunning. I mean, how exactly, I mean, it's just you can't even, don't even know where to begin. It's such a kindergarten view of the world. I mean, the bad news is that horrible ideologies have dominated countries and continents, have killed tens of millions of people and have ended up, of course, they can get discredited over time. Of course, you want to be right, not wrong, in terms of your view of human nature and your love of liberty. But at the end of the day, the forces of liberty need to have a heck of a lot of guns. I mean, that's the lesson of World War II, isn't it? Uh, uh, Hitler didn't fall because uh, you know, the Nazi ideology was just as bad in 1938 or 1940 as it was in 1944 or 1945. And it fell because we rearmed and were able to, to defeat the Nazis. And obviously, Reagan had a defense build up, and that helped along with a moral case against, against the Soviet Union. It helped defeat the Soviet Union. Incidentally, I wish President Obama would do more to make the case for freedom while he's at it. I mean, it's not as if he's fighting the ideological war very, very uh, aggressively, honestly. No, I, you're, you're absolutely right. All right, let's shift uh, a little bit, stay in the Middle East, but talk about uh, Iran. And you had written a piece uh, the other day. Um, which was uh, titled the, um, uh, the um, sentence that could doom the Iran deal. Here we are again, another deadline, <laughs> quote unquote deadline, extended again. Uh, and, and you know, we get conflicting messages out of these uh, talks here. We're close, but we're still far apart. Uh, I, I, I'm kind of shocked, really, that, um, that uh, they just haven't capitulated on everything that Iran wants and, and just said, okay, here, let's sign. You know, they, they've been so bad, you sort of expect them to capitulate on even the most mind boggling demands. But on this one, I think they know they couldn't get it through Congress. I mean, if they both give Iran the signing bonus of $100 billion, which the deal does envision, and relieve the arms embargo, then you're just basically giving Iran a sort of a check, literally a check, and the ability to buy the arms with a check to, to dominate and spread terror through the Middle East. So I think that one, probably the Iranians want to step too far. Maybe, they'll, maybe they're just bargaining, they'll pull back. Maybe they just think they'll test for another few days or weeks uh, how much the Obama administration will cave. So i got to think there'll still be a deal. It'll be a horrible deal. Uh, we need to fight it hard in Congress. And I do think the Dem even the Democrats who have never stood up to Obama and who always caved to the left, uh, I'm hearing from some of them, they are nervous about this. I mean, they know this is really a bad deal, yep. and they're going to be voting for something that gives tens of billions of dollars to a terror-sponsoring uh, Israel, seeking to destroy Israel, regime that's got American blood on its hands, and I, I really, I, I think there's a chance, a little more of a chance than I would have thought that this thing could just go down. One more very quickly. I just saw Hillary was told Brianna Keeler when she said the polls show people don't trust you. She said, people do trust me, and the only thing I could go by is the reaction I get when I see people during the campaign. Is she delusional or what? Uh, how many people is she really seeing during the campaign? I mean, <laughs> my sense is she hasn't exactly been mixing and mingling with hundreds of thousands of Americans, you know. <laughs> couple of dozen hand-picked people here and there. Maybe they do trust the ones they pick to right, be with her. Right, right, right. All right, Bill, great to talk to you, my friend. Thank you very, very much. Be well. Take thanks. care. Bill Crystal, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. And uh, we're coming back. Yeah, we've got a lot of dial tones going on today. Uh, and I don't want to make a call. We're coming back. Don't go away. <laughs>